Africa. Congo has got the largest natural resources of any country you can think of in the world. Gold, diamonds, uranium, titanium, name it, Madam Speaker. Today, Madam Speaker, mining consortiums in the Congo are hiring mercenaries from Europe. You remember the notorious mercenaries like Bob Denner and others? A new crop of mercenaries have now been hired as armies to protect mining interests in the Congo. Meaning, Madam Speaker, the mining processes in Congo is divorced from the state. So there are no taxes being levied. The taxes are either paid to the warlords or corrupt state officials. The warlords who then bring mercenaries to protect are levying unlawful taxes. Madam Speaker, and Congo with its now 72 million strong population. And Madam Speaker, it's important to mention that we in East Africa have even a greater affinity with the people of Congo. You know, if you go to Congo, the Congo forest divides the country into two. From the eastern side of the Congo, Bonia, uh, Kis, uh, Kisangani, uh, Butebo, and all those towns, you cannot travel to Kinshasa by road. There's no road. 60 years after independence, there's no road. If you are in Bonia, or Butebo, or Virunga, or Kisangani, you can only go to Kinshasa by air. In fact, most people fly to Nairobi, then take Kenya ways, and fly back over their country to go to Kinshasa. This is a country 60 years after independence, and the richest country in Africa. Right from Shombe, Lumumba, Kazavupu, Mobutu, Kabila One, Kabila II, Chisikedi, all these guys, Madam Speaker, have just been ravaging the country. And it makes it very difficult for this organization to try to bring peace. ICJLR is working with the AU, is working with the UN, it reports to the Security Council, it has been monitoring elections, but what elections can you monitor in the Congo, Madam Speaker? That is the big question. So I want to encourage, Madam Speaker, that parliamentarians in the region, from Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Congo, Congo Brazza, Angola, uh, Central Africa Republic, South Sudan, the Sudan, and Cameroon, I don't know if I mentioned Cameroon, should be proactive in trying to help this country because there's an annual meeting every other year of parliamentarians from these countries. Madam Speaker, we want to see that the resolutions we make, and I want to encourage uh, my brother Bogisio, that in September, during the UNGA, the annual General Assembly of the UN, that these reports also be tabled there to assist the world in realizing the plight of the Congo. It's a very sad event that a country so rich, a country so endowed. Congo is now degenerate to just a producer of Lingala music for our nightclubs and, and the all manner of things that are totally unhelpful to the generation and growth of wealth and improvement of the lot of the people. And it is very, very sad. Madam Speaker, I also want to touch on the management of our water resources and the humanitarian situation that has come out of the problems in the Congo. Madam Speaker, I don't know if you have uh, come across information that the Inca Dam on the River Congo has the capacity to generate over a hundred thousand megawatts of power that can power this continent with cheap green energy. And the AU has from time to time been toying with the idea of putting a consortium together to exploit the natural resource that is the Congo 
and generate green energy that will serve as far as South Africa, as far as Kenya, as far as Nigeria. Madam Speaker, in Africa you'll find many countries have very small economies. Even Kenya, as we call ourselves uh, the giant of this region, our consumption capacity of power is only 1,750 megawatts. So if the Inga Dam was generating 100,000 megawatts, it's enough to save us from this uh, expensive thermal energy and uh, other forms of energy that uh, are so costly. Today, Madam Speaker, if you used to pay uh, 2,000 shillings of your house bill, you are being handed a bill of 10,000. The other day, Madam Speaker, and I think it was purely because of my political affiliation and standing, I was handed a bill of 690,000 for my house bill. And when I asked what is happening, they come and disconnect my power from the pole, as if I'm a persistent offender, Madam Speaker. I know this kind of vindictive behavior doesn't help heal the country. And I'm sure there are many others uh, who have been uh, treated in the same manner. We want to see, if we want to industrialize, then we need peace in this region. And that's why ICJLR becomes very relevant. And I want to encourage that we continue having heads of state meetings, not just to go and meet, talk, and pat each other on the back and leave. We want to see the regional heads of state telling Joseph Kabila that he must leave office because his time is up. You can't have a constitution that says you serve two terms and after two terms you realize you are too young, you are too important, you haven't finished your business. Nobody can finish a business, Madam Speaker. There are always successions to carry out the work. And Congo being unstable means instability in the region. We have refugees from Congo in camps in Uganda, in camps in Rwanda, in camps in Burundi, in camps in Central Africa, in camps in Angola, in camps in Tanzania, in camps in Kenya. How can a country be so sp split to a level where, Madam Speaker, they can't even hold a census because they don't know where their people are. Madam Speaker, I beg to support the report. Senator Moses Wetangula, Senator wa County of Bungoma. There seems to be no more interest. Oh. Okay, we have other interest. Uh, Senator Harake Absh Abshiro. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'll be very short. I rise to support the report and to congratulate um, the team that went for a good report. Uh, but just listening to Senator Wetangula, I'm very pleased that uh, this Senate has global perspective because sometimes I get worried that maybe we just we have so many of our own issues that we forget our regional leadership as um, as a country. But the fact that this country has made a lot of progress in in peace, um, in governance, in politics. Um, and in a lot of other areas of our social and economy, uh, it, I'm glad that um, the Senator has alluded to a lot of the leadership that we as a country can provide to the region and, and the geopolitical space that we take, we, we, we occupy, and that is very important. So I'm very uh, happy that um, this Senate is taking that leadership and is actually... In